Now, it is the only species on Earth in which the male becomes pregnant, but there's an awful lot more to learn about seahorses. These creatures are under serious threat worldwide because of their popularity in Chinese medicine. Well, a documentary airs tonight on RT1 about the challenges facing them. Here's a preview. The seahorse, fragile, mysterious, slave to the slightest current. A fish with the head of a horse, the tail of a monkey, the eyes of a chameleon. A paradox of evolution. We are its greatest devotees, and yet its most voracious predator. Harvested in vast numbers to feed the ever-growing demands of traditional Chinese medicine, this extraordinary creature will almost certainly be extinct within the next 20 years. Millions have been spent trying to avert this. Every effort has failed. One man refused to give up. Well, I'm joined now by Irish marine biologist Keelan Doyle. Keelan, thank you very much indeed for coming in and for bringing these seahorses with you. Um, you've just been telling me you were the only person who's ever managed to breed them in captivity. Yeah, yeah, you better believe it. We were the first people in the world to successfully breed them. Now, the Chinese, on the other hand, have been trying to breed them since 1952 and they've invested $100 million trying to achieve it. And what you actually have here is a, a mother, a seahorse family, if you like, mother, father, and these are the babies. Yeah, this is the mother and father. The, the seahorse is a kind of a bit of a, a mishmash of animals. It's got a head like a horse. Yeah. It's got the tail of a monkey. It's got a pouch just like a kangaroo. And it's got eyes that actually move independently, just like a chameleon. Really? Yeah. So they're really kind they're of extraordinary unusual. Extraordinary looking creatures. They're really unusual. And not only that, right, but even better than that, it's the only animal in the world that the man and not the woman has the babies. Yeah, that is, that is phenomenal. And these are then there. But, I mean, Keelan, I suppose they're phenomenal from a biological, zoological point of view, but they're under huge pressure, aren't they, at the moment? Tell me about this. They are. Unfortunately, they're under huge pressure. They've been wiped out to supply traditional Chinese medicine. Now, this isn't something that's happened over the last 100 years. This has actually happened in the last 10 to 15 years. And we estimate from our research that these guys that have been with us since the time of dinosaurs will actually become extinct in the next 10 to 15 years. They're getting them that quickly. They're getting them that quickly. I mean, we, we would visit areas where they would have caught 50 seahorses a night. Now they're maybe catching only two seahorses a night. The stocks are that depleted. Wipe where out. do they live? Are they... They, live, they live pretty much all over the world, but mainly in sort of warmer areas like Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, Brazil, where these guys come from here. Right, and these are some of the dried ones there that have been Yeah, caught. If, if you have a look on camera, this is Hold the sort of sad there, part yeah. of it here. This is, this is a male seahorse, right? And the reason we know he's male is because he has a pouch and this pouch is actually full of about 4,000 baby seahorses, right? So not only was he killed, but all the little babies that were inside him were killed. And if you look at his neck here, it was actually hung. So these guys are actually caught and they're hung with fishing line off the roofs of the, of the fishing villages. So basically they're hung out to die. Really, to dry out? To dry. Um, and that's another one there. That's, that's the female. And what we have here are examples. You see, traditionally the Chinese would have had them as soups and tonics. But now, which is more worryingly, they actually take them in tablet form. So what we've got here is seahorse genital tonic pills. And I'll leave it up to your imagination, Keelan, to know what they're for. Seahorse genital tonic. Give us a look at those pills. And so this, that's ground up seahorse, more or less. That's ground up. What's the, the main ingredient to that is seahorse. There's also, would you believe, the, 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 the cervix of oh otters. There's cervix of cerv otters. otters. Can the, you see this? They're just... Uh, there's the semen of, de of deer is in them. You name it, they throw them into them. Fluffy looking black things. And th these things are, are more expensive than gold in Chinese medicine. Really? So Huge. there's all this mythology has built up around the seahorse that it's Big empowering time. in all kinds of ways. And, and the only reason, and this is really interesting, the seahorses stay together for life. So if one of them basically dies, the other one actually dies of a broken heart about two weeks later, right? And that's the only proof. Because they stay, to the, stay together for life, Asian people believe they must be in some way physically happy and that's why they take them as natural aphrodisiacs. And, and it also makes them incredibly vulnerable because one of these gets taken the whole lot of them are wiped out. Exactly, exactly. And these, uh, the children, the babies here, they're, they're all different sizes but they're really hanging out of the dad, aren't they? Is that how they do it? Yeah, I mean the seahorses, they're really playful guys. I mean as I said, I mean they dance. If you come in every morning of their lives, 
the seahorses actually do a dance. They do a kind of a courtship dance together. And the babies then just all day long will kind of hang out of the father, hang out of the mother. They're really social, really act interactive. I mean, they really are an amazing creature. And it's some absolutely of them, fascinating to watch them. Some of them are only two days old, some of the really the really small tiny ones. ones. And what needs to be done? I mean, how can this trade in seahorses be wiped out? Or has any efforts at all been made to wipe it out? Up until we set up our Save Our Seahorses project, there was no attempt to try and save seahorses. And I suppose the documentary tonight, it's been shown all around the world. There's been an eight minute version of it that's been made and it's been shown on all internal flights in China. The Sea Life Centres have done the same. So it's enabling us to get our message around the world. And we're now actually working with the Chinese and not against oh, them. Oh, look, we're seeing some of those pictures of them exactly. hung there. Yeah, it's that's, very how, that's how they're hung up. See the male, yeah. oh, see the pregnant male. That's how they hang them from their little, little sort of fishing houses. And it's not their fault. The people, this is their livelihood. There's yeah. us in China. And you'll see now. I mean, this was just amazing. We were the first people from the West ever to get access to these markets. They're the, very big, some of them, aren't they? I didn't realise they grew to that kind of size. And the bigger it is, the higher, the higher price you pay. You see, for Chinese people, it's all about a welcome. So when you go to somebody's house, the biggest welcome you can give them is actually offering them seahorse soup or seahorse wine. Really? And the bigger the seahorse in the soup, the bigger the welcome. Look at the bags of seahorses. My goodness, I mean, my hundreds goodness. of thousands of seahorses, more than I've ever seen in my whole life. That's Just, unbelievable to see that. So listen, go back to the, what needs to be done or what can we do about it? Basically what we can do, first of all, you can, you can join up our campaign, which is on saveourseahorses.org. Mm -hmm. um, sign up. We have a petition that's going to be handed over to the Chinese authorities. They're working with us. So we're trying to make awareness, trying to make people aware that, listen, guys, these things are going to become extinct. We have the technology. We have the, the, the know-how how to help it. So we're training people well, now in that Indonesia you can breed them, yes, to, you can to be able to stocks, breed them yeah. so we can actually release them back into the wild. And we have projects in Cambodia and Indonesia that are actually currently releasing seahorses back into the wild. I suppose really you've got to them. talk to the Chinese people, though, And we are. You? The Chinese have been very, very you know, good in that we're working together. So we don't want this to be seen as an anti-Chinese thing because, you know, it's all about working together because they're making mistakes. Let's face it, we're making mistakes. But if we can work together, we can help solve this problem. Super. That goes out tonight, what, 11? Tonight, 11.15. So please check it out and please sign up to Save Our Seahorses. Dot org, isn't Dot it? Dot org. Keelan, it's fascinating. Really interesting. Thank you so much for bringing them in. I've never seen them in real life before. It's, uh, it's brilliant.